There's a ton of fear out there. I think that the Democrats are really, really worried right about now. And you know what? They should be. They should be. They should be worried because they've got a candidate that America is really not buying in on. I mean, look, let's face it. Joe Biden was too old for the job. People noticed. That's why he's not there. But it wasn't just his age. I think they would have forgiven that to a certain extent if he had had amazing policies. But people look at the policies and they're like, wait a second, no, this isn't really working for me. My groceries are way up. My gas is way up. I'm not making as much. And so consequently, consequently, they were dissatisfied with Biden. Well, why do we think that's all going to change when you wave a magic wand and you say, we're going to put Kamala in the seat instead? How is it going to change what's really going on at home? It doesn't. And so consequently, Democrats right now are really, really scared because they have somebody in the seat, Kamala Harris, who has, frankly, the same track record as Joe Biden and doesn't really have the je ne sais quoi on the debate stage, nor frankly the policy chops to be able to pull this off. And they know it. And there's a big article in Friday's Axios. This is amazing. I'm going to quote from it. They did an interview with some of the Biden advisors who had been a little frustrated with Harris's performance as vice president. And they have three big concerns. They say it falls into three buckets. Guys, this is really remarkable, especially when you hear number two. That's the one that just blows me away. Anyway, number one, they found her public performance is uneven and often not reassuring. This improved over time, but even recently, several of Biden's team members worried she'd struggle under the glare of national pressure. So I guess this is why she's not doing any interviews. I guess this is why there's no press conferences. I guess this is why everything is all scripted out. But it's not just that. It's not just me guessing. I think it is scripted out for good reason, because if you go to number two, guess what? Boom. Quote, they found her risk adverse to the point of paralysis. The issue she embraced most, abortion rights, is one with the least risk, as polls show Democrats with a huge advantage on that issue. Okay, so the only issue she's going back to is the abortion thing, but um, she's paralyzed, apparently, on everything else. If you're risk adverse to the point of paralysis, I don't really think you should be the president of the United States. Frankly, I don't think you should be vice president, but frankly, I don't think you should be senator. Frankly, I don't think you belong in politics, period, okay? You cannot be risk adverse to the point of paralysis because not doing anything, not doing anything at all is the same exact thing as making the worst decision. I mean, hey, at least if you make the worst decision, you made a decision. But this woman actually can't make a decision. And then the other thing that they noticed, which I've talked to you about, is her turnover in the staff rate. Check this out. Quote, they worried, number three, about the high turnover rate among her staff of the 47 Harris staffers who publicly disclosed to the Senate in 2021, only five still work for her as of this spring. That's incredible. This tally is incomplete because roughly half the staff isn't even listed on the Senate disclosures. All right. <laughs> oh, wow. So she can't hold on to her employees. She can't hold on to her staff. What does that tell you about her? Think about it. I mean, it's clearly not easy or nice to work for. I heard that you had to stand in the room whenever she came in. When she walks into the room, you have to stand up. <laughs> She's kind of all on ceremony, but very little on substance. Uh, you know, if you, again, you look at the Axios piece, it's really rather shocking. They talk about nine areas in which she shifted views on her current position, or it's just not known what her current position is. So you get the banning plastic st straws, you get that mandate for automakers that, you know, they got to be EV, totally EV by 2035. Apparently, according to Axios, they've asked and asked and asked, and the campaign won't say whether she is still for it or not, because you see, it's kind of not a winning issue, especially when the companies themselves are backing out. We've seen that from a couple of them recently, Ford and Toyota. They're like, okay, uh, this isn't really for us. We're going to do the hybrid model instead. Three, banning fracking because of concerns over global warming and potential water contamination. Well, now that's no longer the case. Okay, now she's no longer in favor of banning fracking altogether because you see she needs to win Pennsylvania. I'm telling you, she should have just gone with Josh Shapiro. She would have had a heck of a better shot. Number four, mandatory buyback program for assault weapons. Apparently that's no longer something that she's in favor of. She's dropped that idea. Five is decriminalizing crossing the border from a criminal offense to a civil one. She no longer supports that. Reparations for slavery. Her position on that one is unclear, but it's a uh, 
kind of a, a no-win thing. They, they've been battling that in California. Number seven, building a wall on the southwest border, a defining Trump promise that many Democrats have fought. She accepted it as part of the bipartisan border package that Republicans killed. And then, of course, we know she's been promoting it in her commercials. CNN had to admit that's actually a Trump wall that she keeps showing in the commercials. Eight, a federal jobs guarantee. Wow, 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 wow. A federal jobs guarantee that was part of her Green New Deal. She's no longer for that. I mean, who is this woman, ladies and gentlemen? Who is this woman? I think it's a fair question for us to be asking right about now. And then Medicare for All, which Harris embraced in her first year as senator. She's backed off of that. I mean, Gosh, no wonder she doesn't want to do any interviews, at least in, in Donald Trump's favor, right? He, he basically has kind of had one position and one position only for a long time, like a very, very long time. So yes, they're freaking out. They're really scared she's not going to be able to do it, that she's not prepared, and that's going to be a disaster.